Hello, welcome to the video for what is material, the noise node. So let's go ahead and run through this quick little example. The noise node itself has a quite a bit of inputs and parameters that we can set. So we will go ahead and try to cover them all in some detail. So this right here is the result of a standard noise node without anything actually plugged into it or anything set up you're going to see just a bunch of noise. So that's all the noise node is for. It's intended to give you a random amount of noise. One thing to keep in mind is it, it does use a good chunk of processing power and instructions when you are using the noise node. So you want to use them sparingly depending on your target. So let's see how this works. So the noise node, the first parameter is going to be our scale. This is basically going to be how big is our noise node going to be? With the larger the number being the larger our noise node will be. Now it's going to technically have the opposite effect of what you might be expecting. The larger the scale, the smaller the noise is going to be. So as you can see here, we have much tinier dots. And if we actually drop this down to something much more usable, for example, like 0.1, we're actually going to be able to see our noise better. So the smaller the scale, the larger your noise area is going to be. Next is going to be our quality. Basically, quality of zero is going to give us this effect. And if we pump this up, it's going to take longer to process, but we may get a better and a smoother actual effect. For the most part, a quality of zero is probably going to be good enough. But if you're not quite getting what you want out of it, you want a little bit better, you can go ahead and change to a different value. But the higher the value, the slower it will be. The next one, if I click back on it, is going to be our function. This is the important one. This determines what is being used to generate your noise pattern. Simplex is going to be the default. Now it's fast and it takes about 94 instructions per level. If you look here, we're using 122 instructions for our shader. If we change this to Perlin noise, you're going to find it's going to use only 77 for the Perlin drops our shader down to 105, but as you can see, we do get a different effect for our noise. The next one is going to be gradient. This is our big one. This one is going to jump up our shader count to 421 because the gradient uses almost 400 by itself, but as you can see, you get a completely different pattern out of it. Our last one is something introduced recently, fast gradient. It is much faster, it uses significantly less shaders, but it's in testing. It's not guaranteed whether it's going to work on every piece of hardware, so keep that in mind. So fast gradient is going to give you your quickest and the lowest amount of instructions, but it may not be the most compatible. We're going to switch this back to simplex to continue our example. We're going to use this pattern here. So the next one is turbulence. Basically. How many different frequencies of noise are used to calculate our noise? If we have it unchecked, you're going to get something like this for a result. You're going to get a more consistent white and black differentiation. If we turn on our turbulence, you're going to see what looks like to be parts of turbulence, parts of these cloud-like noise on top of other cloud-like noise. You're going to get them stacking. That's what our turbulence is going to do. Now combined with turbulence, you have the levels. This determines how many are stacked. So if we drop this down to one, you're going to get our basic. You drop this up to two, we're going to get our next. And you can continue, as you see, getting different effects as you stack more and more noise on top of each other. You can go up to like 10, for example, and you're going to get a much more noisy effect. So your levels are going to determine basically how noisy or how much noise there is. Let's drop this back down to our default, and we'll go to the next one. Now you have output min and output max. Basically, this is going to drive how dark it is on your min and how light it is on your max, or your minimum and your maximum are random. Technically, they don't have to be light and dark, but traditionally, your min would be your dark and your max would be your light. By default, it's negative 1 to 1, which means you're going to have a range of two numbers, basically, negative 1 through 0 and 0 through 1 with your min's going to be your darks and your max going to be your lights. 
So to see an effect, let's say we wanted to get more light and less dark. Well, let's raise our number from negative 1 to 0 and check it out. You're now going to see our blacks have pretty much been removed. And all we're getting is mostly whites because we only have a range of 0 to 1 now. Now let's say we wanted the opposite. Well, we could do 0 for our max and negative 1 for our min. And we're going to end up with the opposite more blacks and less whites. And of course you can adjust as needed. You could always go with something like a negative five and a one. This is going to give you still some lights, but a lot more darker areas. So that's how you can determine how much of your noise is gonna be dark, make your minimum a lower number, and make it more. You have five values basically, a range of zero to negative five you can choose from for your dark, and you only have a value of 0 to 1 you can choose from for your light. So that's how you can adjust if it's dark or light. Let's reset this back. Now our last one is going to be our level scale. Basically controls the scale of the turbulence levels when they're active. Let's set this to 0 and take a look at what happens. Nothing. You can't see anything because there is nothing there. We change it to 1. We're going to end up seeing this. You're not going to have very much edge it very very much softness on your turbulence it's a very harsh edged we just bump this up to let's say four you're going to see much more softer edges but you're not going to see them overlapping for the most part so by the default of two you're going to see a lot more joining and a lot more overlapping with the softer edges so level scale basically allows you to adjust the turbulence levels and how well they're going to mesh together. By default, it's set to two. So this is going to be our new noise that we're going to work with. We have two inputs, and these are not set in here. These are separate. Our first one is going to be our filter width. Technically our second one, but our first one, for example, is filter width. By default, it's going to be zero. It's not going to affect anything. Now, if we change to, let's say, for example, a 1, let's change it to a 2, and let it run, you're going to see a change. You're going to see any filter that's applied to this is going to be made wider, which means instead of being smaller for the results, we're going to get bigger, which means our we're going to have separation, basically is how you can think of it. If you have a 1, you have your normal separation. Let's say we go with a 0.5 you're going to see less separation between your blacks and your whites. That's why when we had it down to the zero, we basically eliminated all separation and it was, you know, back to normal. So this allows you to basically separate apart your blacks and your whites into the more distinct pattern. So we go three and you can see it separating more and more. For the most part, you're going to leave that alone. You don't really need to change it. Our last one is going to be our position node. This basically takes in, it says, a two to three dimensional vector. But if you put in a two dimension, it's going to get upset. It's going to tell you it will not work. So despite it saying two to three, it's lying. You need to put in a three dimensional vector for it to work properly. So what I've done is set up this little node graph here. And we'll plug it in. You'll see what happens. It's going to give us this really weird effect, which actually, if we put this on a sphere, looks really cool. Kind of gives you like a little bit of turbulence under the turbulence. So what is this? Basically, this is your input position for the texture size, and that's it. So you, it allows you to adjust the position of the noise. And if you combine it with something like a time node like I am, it's adjusting it in real time. So I'm basically telling it to adjust it on the X and the Y based on a speed, multiplying it by the time. And then I'm adding that to where the object is in the world and the position of the object in order to give this nifty little effect. If we change this back to, let's say, 0 and 0, for example, you're going to see nothing. But changing this one is going to adjust the speed at which the X rotation pans. And then if I adjust this one at the same time as well, let's say in the Y, you're going to see that really nifty overlapping effect where you have two different things happening at the same time. So that is a way to use the position node. 
make sure f- it's it's a position node. It is a position node. It's intended to adjust the position of the noise. That's it. Here's an example of it using time. So that is our noise node. It's used to make noise. Obviously, you can use this in your shader if you want to maybe make noise that is done in real time. But keep in mind, a noise node is computationally more expensive than like a texture. It may use less memory, but it's going to use more performance. So keep that in mind when you're trying to weigh the benefits. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.